everybody. I'm Al Rochelle, and this is the portion of the PCS Journal. We talk to people within Pinellas County Schools about what they do. Big issue this year, well, it always should be, is school safety. A lot of things have changed. A lot of new programs have been implemented to make sure that your kids are safe at school. Joining me right now is Chief Luke Williams from the Pinellas County Schools Police Department. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. So how long have you been on the job now? It's, what, two years? Fifteen months. Oh, it's fifteen months. I'm not counting, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's been fifteen months. That's right. Retired from the St. Petersburg Police Department. That's correct. Uh, is the department everything that you thought it was going to be when you walked in the door? Because obviously to step away from a big metropolitan police department to a smaller force whose mm -hmm. job is maybe even more critical, well, as critical as, as the St. Petersburg Police Department. It is Actually, we've gone through a transition uh, because obviously our roles changed with Marjorie Stoneman. And uh, the officers and uh, all our employees and our supervisors have stepped up to the challenge to include our school safety officers in all our local jurisdictions that assist us uh -huh. in making sure that our schools are safe. So the time has changed, and so we've changed and we've adapted to uh, what the tasks are in front of us. Now, there are so many words that are thrown around. The Guardian Program. Is Pinellas County Schools part of the Guardian Program? Yes, it is. But okay. uh, we refer to our Guardian uh, as our school safety officers. They're the men and women that you'll see in our schools with the bright yellow shirts. And, okay. and uh, so we have a, a, a mixture, we call it a hybrid, where we've employed not only school resource officers, but also our uh, school safety officers in our schools as well. So they, they primarily uh, staff our elementary schools. Now, SROs, are they sheriff's department employees or are they school employees? Well, it depends. The, uh, the school de uh, school's police department has a cadre of school resource officers. All our local jurisdictions have a cadre of uh, school resource officers, as does the sheriff's office. Okay. So we all work in it as a, as a team to make sure that our, our children and our staffs are safe throughout the county. So, at a t and I'm going to go through, through them. At a, let's start with high school. At a typical high school level, how many officers are actually on the campus working for safety? Uh, dedicated to that particular yes. school on the high school level are two dedicated officers or deputies for those individual high schools. Uh, middle schools? Middle schools, there's typically one. There, there is one, okay. uh, sometimes more. And of course, we have uh, partnerships with our jurisdictions and with uh, my school resource officers. They have the ability to go to any school uh, and basically augment that staff and if it's necessary. And then on the elementary level? Elementary level are our school safety officers. And each school has a dedicated uh, armed uh, either officer or school safety officer on the campus. So there, I mean, as far as the rules are go, there couldn't be any more consistent program than what Pinellas County's got in place. I'm really proud of the, the partnership and the, and the leadership from the, the school board, Dr. Greco and his staff, as well as uh, Sheriff Galtieri and the local jurisdictions and the chiefs that we've all worked together to make sure that our children are safe. Because you may have a child that uh, lives in Tarpon Springs but goes to school in, in St. Petersburg. So mm -hmm. it's very important that we work together. And I can say that Pinellas has been doing a really, really good job of being cooperative. And I mean, it doesn't hurt that you got Bob Galtieri, who is the head of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Advisory Board, the committee, you know, in our backyard, who is who is very firm in, in what he believes and, and uh, has been talking to a lot of school districts about it. He, he is, and I can tell you that uh, we've, uh, Pinellas County has made a lot of strides, even before Marjorie Stoneman. And so uh, we've actually concentrated on, on the commission and what the commission has been asking that the states do. And it's our responsibility to make sure our children are safe. So rather the sheriff said it or not, we we're going to make sure that it gets done. Yeah, and, and so how many total officers, if you counted school resource officers, what the local municipalities are providing, plus what you have, what, what's the total force about? I would say, and in, in, I, I don't want to give it a specific number, oh, okay, okay. but I would say in, in, uh, uh, about 200, 250 okay, yeah, that yeah. are dedicated to uh, our keeping our kids safe in the school. And keep in mind that each local jurisdiction, all we need to do is call for assistance and we have a cadre of other officers who can come and assist us. Uh, so let's talk about some of the other programs that I noticed here on, on my cheat sheet, as they call it. You, you've got the Identikid program. Uh, that has been used under different names, but tell me about this program and particular what it does. Yeah, th this is a, a, a program that allows us to allow our visitors and our volunteers access to our schools, and it's an identi identification process to make sure that we understand who's on our campuses and basically be able to document that they're there, but also allow our volunteers and our parents and visitors to, to come in and go into the schools uh, pretty uh, a relatively pain-free. Uh, I, I think uh, in past times it was uh, somewhat of a hassle to get in and out of the schools, but now we've, we've streamlined yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because the schools were different and then they had different requirements. So uh, another part of this, uh, even though as I'm, as I'm thinking back in terms of the, of the incidents that we've seen, 
hardening of the schools to make sure a lot of the new schools are, I mean, it's relatively easy as far as the hardening is concerned because everything goes through one central focus point. I'm thinking of Largo High School, Palm Harbor, uh, Osceola, all of these. Um, how much retrofitting and changing did you have to do with the schools as far as the entrances were concerned? Well, uh, starting last year, well, actually even before last year started, we did all the storefronts, and uh, all those schools were completed prior to the, the start of last school term. Uh -huh. And so basically uh, with the new construction, it's automatic that we, we uh, require certain criteria so that those schools, when they're being constructed, they have the heart and, and the, uh, the one entry uh, location and so forth. So it's continual. We review and make sure we uh, actually we uh, have an electronic uh, review of all our campuses that we go over the summer to ensure that all our um, fences, uh, gates, doors, those things are in place like they should be as well as the storefront. So we uh, check those uh, through the summer and, and uh, if there's a need to make an adjustment, we, we get it done relatively quickly. Let's talk about something else that happens a lot because I'm in the news business and we get on the news and they go, oh, there's a lockdown at a school and everybody gets confused about, well, is it, is it a, lock, a campus lockdown, a room lockdown? Give me some definitions. When we hear the word lockdown thrown around pretty uh, frivolously at some times, uh, w what does it actually mean? A lockdown means that there's something that's happening on that campus that requires those students to, and the, the teachers and faculty, make sure that they're, they're safe. And so we'll go into a lockdown where the, the uh, actually we uh, require that our classroom doors be locked um, all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of procedures that we go through and we have monthly training to talk about lockdowns, procedures, and, and it's situational. So there may be an instance where you may have to run and there may be a situation where you may have to lock down and hide in your classroom. But uh, from a definitional standpoint, uh, we used to have a, uh, a definition about uh, uh, lockout. We no longer lose that, use that term. Okay, yeah. We refer to it as a closed campus. A closed campus is a situation where there may be something going on, uh, say, at Largo Mall or somewhere close to a school. Okay. And, and it's, there's nothing going on in the school per se, but we're going to close that campus so that we don't have any visitors coming in and we have no one going out. It's regular business as, as usual. Uh, kids are changing classes, getting the education that they're there for, uh, but uh, we're making sure that we keep the, the interior and the perimeter of the school safe and that we don't allow anybody in or out. Now, has anybody thought of making sure this language is kind of universal in the state of Florida? Because you're talking seven counties, and I mm -hmm. this is the first time I've heard the closed campus explanation, yes. whereas some other ones are using some other terminology. Yes, I, I think that uh, with uh, Sheriff Galtieri on the commission, and they've been taking best practice back to the commission and, and we've actually of course been looking at the best practices from around the state yeah so I think that uh, the simpler the language is for the parents because parents get confused as well as some yeah. of our teachers <laughs> right, yeah. and and they may think that there's really an issue going on within their school proper but it's really not it's something that's happening and our, our local jurisdictions are, are trained to make sure that they call the school in case they have a, a, a subject that they're chasing running toward a school mm -hmm so that we can go to a closed campus situation. Now, what about a situation where I, in Hillsborough County, the teachers have some kind of device that they're able to wear that, it, that a teacher can actually uh, institute or start a lockdown at a particular mm -hmm. school? Do we have that here in Pinellas? Well, Interlogic Solutions gives us that ability to make sure that if there is a situation where a teacher or anyone on the staff and, and uh, one of the educational components we did over the summer is to make sure that the, the teachers, the staff, the plan operators, the cafeteria workers, bus drivers, uh, what have you, know that they have the ability to, to order a lockdown. And okay. at that point, uh, the uh, uh, I don't want to go into the dynamics of what the system sure, can yeah, do, right. but there's an automatic uh, message that goes out uh, on the campus telling the, the staff and the students to make themselves safe. And then again, it's situational. If, if you're out on the, the uh, PE field and you see a situation going on at the school, it may be uh, more advantageous for you all to run away as opposed to try and go into a classroom. Has anybody thought about doing any measurements or will they to, to figure out what this does to the kid's psyche? Because I heard, I've heard a bunch of kids in the last couple of days have been talking about, yeah, we were told that, uh, you know, worst case scenario, we should just start grab stuff and start throwing it at the shooter. Now, I understand the logic behind it because you create the confusion, the, the shooter doesn't quite know which way to go, but it also then makes the, the uh, students take off an, an offensive uh, posture. Mm -hmm. and, and 
I, I hope people have thought that through because, I mean, then they, do they make themselves more of a target then or not? Well, um, what I'll say is that we have strived to try to make sure that that situation doesn't get on the campus. Right. So okay. we've done a lot of preventative and a lot of measures to make sure that that situation doesn't first get on the campus. But if it does, we want to make sure that the students are prepared to, um, to address those issues and basically make it safe for themselves. Of course, we do have uh, studies and who better to, to teach and get into the psyche of a kid than our teachers and our psychologists that we have on staff. Yeah. So there's a lot of thought that goes into the, the, the monthly trainings that we do. It's all age appropriate. And we also have circles where the, the teacher will sit down and talk with their class and they'll basically brainstorm as to uh, if this happened, what would we do? If we we're outside, what would we do? And so it, it tends to help the kid not only at, at school, but it also helps them in the community because our schools are really safe. Yeah. Um, and so unfortunately, as you've seen in the media, there are things that happen in the community that have pretty much the same dynamics of a, a, a person trying to cause harm to a large group of people in the school setting, mm -hmm. but now they've taken them to public settings as well. Now, we also have, as I'm thinking back, uh, a, n a number of these shootings that have occurred are by the students themselves. Mm -hmm. So you wonder, if the kids have been trained in school, what they're, everybody's going to do, does that give the shooter an advantage? Somebody walks in because he was there or um, her was there, she was there? Well, uh, they understand the, the dynamics of what goes on in the school, but they don't understand the dynamics of law enforcement and the approaches and the, attack, the tactics that we will use and, right. and going in and making sure we keep the, the kids safe. But I can tell you that through Fortify Florida, uh, Sandy Hook Promise, uh, it starts with Hello, all those programs are designed to make sure that, you know, uh, what the studies have shown that some of these kids who have caused problems at school, they were either bullied, they felt like they weren't a part of the, the, uh, the school culture, mm -hmm. they were somewhat outsiders. So again, we try to be preventative by making sure we identify issues uh, and, and to the point where we've actually dedicated one of our school's police officers to serve on a threat assessment team. Okay. That basically, uh, that team is uh, led by uh, Michael Musto, and basically they look at issues of behavioral or uh, uh, sometimes a kid may say, well, my friend's not acting like they've been acting in the past yeah, and there's right. something strange about it. And we can take that information and we can work and make sure that not only internally with our uh, psychologists and psychologists that we have on staff here at the, the school board, we can also uh, utilize our outside partners, and uh, we have a mobile crisis uh, uh, mental health team yeah. that if there's wraparound services that we may need to, to go beyond what we do as a, a, uh, a school district, that they, uh, they can do wraparound services. And for we families. also know that there are organizations that are monitoring some of the social media. Fortify Florida does some of that, so yes. at least maybe you get some kind of early warning. And just one other thing, because we had a kid arrested just recently, because he made a threat on, on a video game. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a threat, whether you're playing the game or whether you think it's a joke or something, is a threat, period. It is, it is. and we have a state statute that uh, basically gives law enforcement the ability to make an arrest if a person threatens to either shoot up or harm a, uh, a school setting or, or a mass group of people. Yeah. And what I would tell our students is that, that it's, it's not a game and uh, that you run the risk of uh, some type of uh, uh, issue if you do those types of threats. So uh, we're encouraging our, um, our, our teachers and our faculties and, and people in the community to help mentor our kids, make them feel uh, as a, a part of the, the school, yeah. have that basically that camaraderie that they can have. And I think a lot of the issues that we've seen in other places can be really avoided. Yeah, well, I, I hope I never have to interview you after there's been an event because I'm gonna believe that the, with the stuff that the Pinellas County Schools have got in place that you really got this situation in hand as much as possible. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank all of your resource officers and all of your deputies for what they do because I know it's a thankless job and you stand out there in the heat in the morning and the afternoon and try to keep a track of what's going on. They're kind of kind of difficult to do. Luke Williams with the uh, Pinellas Schools Police Department. Thank you so much. Good thank you. Thank you. We're back with more of our program. 